Best part of the character of the entity that is true. You have to enhance it. Right? And this is what my talk today is essentially on. You know, my disclosure is about it. And uh, it is what we call as a vision correcting surgery. And the big question is how do you get the perfect disaster that you want? Patients will be highly disappointed if after a refractive surgery you don't give them a perfect disaster. You can give excuses until the house comes, but they're not going to accept. But the way to improve a patient's outcome is to enhance the power, the accuracy of the spirit, and there's a three step procedure to enhance the accuracy. You improve the biometry, you precisely fit the implants, and you improve the body size, something which people don't seem to talk about. Five steps to enhance the accuracy, better improvement. The role of the eccentric keratometry, application of more accurate formula, you start using posterior keratometry, which for some uncomfortable reasons people are shy of using. And the great thing which is developed in Europe, the ULIP algorithms. Everybody knows they exist, but very few people use them. I use this web source, I find it works very well. And the most comprehensive, big advantage is you can know exactly where you are. Should really good, and you can utilize what we call as telemetric keratometry. You check. When we talk about talk about telecentric keratometry, what does it essentially mean? It means that it is distance independent keratometry. And when you have a constant spot distance, irrespective of the device to eye distance. This gives you what we call as motion independent keratometry. You get a direct radius reading. And the visual assessment of the dots also gives you an assessment of gear fillet integrity. Something you need to look at. Of course, you need to use the newer formulas. The generation 4 formulas cover a broad spectrum of violence, holiday, offer, anxiety, etc. But the, what I've now started using since the last few months is the bad suite, which utilizes the universal toric and the 2K formula. These are certainly are much more accurate than the other. But what I want to bring up today is the role of what we call as posterior corneal curvature. Posterior corneal curvature is crucial in curvature because once in a while you are presented with a patient and you get surprised and you wonder where it came from. Unless you are doing posterior keratometry, you will not be able to handle it. And the posterior corneal surface is an impact on total corneal power as has been spoken. And essentially what you need to do is to replace standard keratometry, which reduces the outline because of the spots outside your line of compatibility. And it is ULIP compatible, so you can utilize it. It is you can it's now comes in a number of machines, one of them is the size, and the total keratometry essentially you measure the front, the back, and then calculate the exact fit. Leave aside the theory, now look at the practice. These are actually scans. What I now want you to see essentially the scan is. Had you done a regular one, you would have three and a quarter, here it's 3.7. See on this hand, 4.73, 4.6 here. So the total keratometry changes from patient to patient. And a number of patients, the total keratometry, the changes which are noticed, for example, is 0.97, 1.25. Here you are putting a 0.757 millimeter to the left with the residual cylinder. In a similar manner, half and after the residual difference then show up between regular keratometry and total. Keratometry, utilizing procedure. So this is what essentially gives you that fine edge in calculating. One of the big advantages in utilizing posterior keratometry is that you can calculate the angle alpha and the angle tau. Angle alpha is the relevant the distance difference between the center of the nucleus and the visual axis, while tau is the distance difference between the center of the nucleus and the visual axis. And by calculating that, you get a much more accurate index. Utilizing a formula known as the chord, chan, y, chord, angle, kappa, evaluation systems. Uh, all this you can now apply in ULIP. ULIP stands for what we call as user group for lesser inter interferon biometry. It's on available on the net. We just have to open it up. It was developed in Wurzburg in Europe itself. We have Professor Hagen with that the initial work. And you can just include, put in your input your data over the last 50 cases and then you get the data which you can then work out, which enables you to get an accuracy which is still higher than is possible. So you use the direct formula, apply the universe, 
you will find that accuracy in Google today. Of course, all of this is great, but unless you can place the idea precisely, it's not going to work out. And I see what is going to be there. Why does it worry us? Why is that because the wow factor is absolute? And the patient is disappointed. Through ages, many techniques have been developed, multiple instruments have been made, as many as there are states in the world, and all these have worked out. But the one which I was quite fond in the last few years of using was the Atom Shade electronic marker, where the horizontal axis can be marked with a very high level of accuracy up to almost two degrees. Works well, but the one which I now use uses is the direct way using what we call the marker is guided system with the heads up display. Heads up display is not new. It was there in cars, it was there in aeroplanes. It has now come down to our instruments where we use the combination of the IO, Master, the Calisto, and the Omni, which gives you a marking which comes in your right eyepiece. Enables you, get, enables you to get a perfect uh, alignment running down the line. And as you will see here with this uh, little uh, trifocal lens being implanted, you notice the axis running down the line over here. And the horizontal plane. Now, as the eye turns, you'll notice the horizontal plane will go on turning. So, once it is painted, this is a photograph taken off the eye of the So, that you can always manage to get your setting perfectly. So, your accuracy obviously is within a plus one and five degree range, which is fairly reasonable and thanks to And finally, a thought provoking concept proper placement of the lens. As in a camera, which has multiple lenses. If you don't position them all perfectly, it's there. So you have to recover the effect of lens position where it has to really fit. And though the key to effect of lens position is the character DLP, there are various changes which can occur over the period of time. Those of you who do trifocal lenses or do multifocal lenses will notice after a period of three to five years, when the five when the capsule starts to contract, they lose them to go out of position. If you have done now, we have done doing this analysis over the last four years, utilizing the capsule laser system, and we find that after doing it, the actual as well as the predicted is comparatively much better than it occurs with the manual group. In other words, is flax a better way to implanting a trifocal lens? My personal view is since the time we started doing flax, we have the quality of the vision improves, the decentration does not. Patient reads better over a period of time with less than a flare. Sometimes very difficult to evaluate and place it into a numerical index for the patients that are happy. Most important of all is the treatment for ocular symptoms. Look for dry eyes. And most important of all is to put a drop of fluorescein. As I say, a drop of fluorescein will save you a great deal of anguish here. So you have to remember to put that in and institute your drops. Either be using your intense pulse laser therapy, IPL, which we are not using on the AP flow, or whichever you do you want. And the results. Properly done, the results of refractive cornea surgery are pretty good. This is just a small series which we will use for the statistic purposes, though my actual series are very much more larger. And this is the IO design visit to refractive power from your surgery. And uh, Still, it's not as good as you want it to be. It's only since the last three or four months that we've started using the Valid PK formula. And hopefully, over a period of time, our results will be still better. But as you notice, your frequency of cylinders in the 1400 cases, almost 30% of them have cylinders. So, the use of correcting cylinders is important. And of course, the change in this kind of visual equipment line is there. However, a new concept needs to be explored a little further, which I think is controversial, but I think we need to go. Does bilateral simultaneous real lens extraction work better than the We did a very small series where we used a series of cases, a hundred cases, one way and a hundred cases done in the interval of one month and apart. Standard procedures applied, standard tests done all the way down the line, evaluation of the cases, and the uncorrected visual acuity in both cases are almost identical. So really, there doesn't seem to be much difference between simultaneous and consecutive. The residual powers are almost negligible, less corrected visual acuity changes are not there. The HOARMS coma and spherical aberration values and misophic diameter, which is what 90% of the times we work at, is, and binocular contrast sensitivity, is also reasonably good. Unlike what people tend to say, contrast sensitivity drops, it drops, it drops. Yes, you can measure that in drops, but more often than not, the patient tells you that I'm seeing much better now than ever did before. Now, 
Now the question is which procedure will be safer in the second or in fact? Now there are tests which we utilize, which are called the day to day tests, the driving, backing a car, even reading a book, telling and even watching TV. And as you notice, in a number of cases, driving in the daytime tends to worsen, driving in the night tends to worsen, and so But you analyze the same thing with simultaneous, and it is significantly better. Especially if you compare fine work done earlier with fine work done later. So the ability to drive a car, backing a car, which is important, reading a book, reading a new is significantly better than simultaneous cataracts. Probably that is the reason why you get, you know, since the brain seems to assimilate a different image much faster when a simultaneous procedure is done. Maybe when we do these sort of cases, where we do uh, 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 trifocal lenses, essentially for presbyteric purposes, maybe the rule should be that we do bilateral rather than these symptoms. Patient symptoms, fairly, fairly still, nothing to worry about. They are happy with dry focal. In conclusion, I would just say that future developments will give us better procedures. But just like it goes with a little line, that everybody wants happiness. Nobody wants pain. But you can't have a rainbow without a little pain. So some operations are going to be there. And finally, leave you with a proper Thank you very much for having me.